Welcome to McNeil Tech, the wash experience. My name is Scott Ferry and I work for Budco, a distributor of McNeil wash systems. Today we're going to talk about the retrofit kit for the RS301 high side washer. The purpose of the kit is to stabilize the brush and this is particularly for car washes that run higher line speeds, high volume, uh, things that would cause additional stress and uh, impact on the brush itself. So first of all, probably the best thing to do is to be able to identify the brush that you the brush that you have whether it would qualify for the high side washer the shaft upgrade kit so the first thing to look at is the base plate of the brush so if the base plate of the brush is this flat plate design where the anchors are used to level the brush then that is the, a likely candidate for the upgrade kit uh, the other thing that you need to do is take the top plate off, the cap off the top of the brush, and uh, when that, with that removed, you look down inside the brush core, and you should be able to see the shaft. And if you see the, the shaft and the clamp around the shaft, not a three-bolt flange, but a cr clamp around the shaft, then that's the brush that would qualify for the upgrade kit. So the upgrade kit itself, just as an overview of the parts that come with it, uh, first of all, it comes with a new shaft. And the shaft is a little bit longer than the one that's already in there so that it ac can accommodate the tower that has a bearing that mounts to the top of it. And that bearing is, uh, will stabilize the brush core and stabilize the brush so it gives it a little bit uh, longer lifespan and also uh, prevents the wear on the motor itself. And then, of course, there's the hardware that comes with it. So we have hardware for the bearing, hardware for the motor, which the base plate of the tower needs longer screws to attach it, uh, shims, a keyway, uh, the bearing itself with the additional hardware, and a lock collar. So these are the things that come with the kit, and we're going to demonstrate how to in install this kit. When working on any equipment, understand all the hazards associated with the task. Before starting any work, lock out and tag out the equipment. Take all necessary safety precautions, including personal protective gear, which includes, but is not limited to, safety glasses, gloves, and footwear. So the first thing that we need to do is actually take all the foam off the core. Uh, now, at some point, you may or may not decide to turn the air off to the brush. The reason I say may or may not is the, the, the shaft itself sometimes can be removed without uh, laying the brush on its side. And so if you, if you can get away with not laying the brush on the side, then you don't have to turn the air off to the system. But we're going to take the cap off here, and we're going to start to remove the foam from the core. So there's the cap. And we'll go ahead and start removing all the foam buns. So now that we've removed the foam from the core or the hub, uh, we can go ahead and remove the hub itself. But the one thing I want to mention before we do that is the foam needs to be laid out on a clean surface in the order that it was removed so that it can be put back in the same order. The reason for that is the top of the brush has a larger diameter foam than the bottom of the brush. So to remove the hub, we have two clamps that hold the hub to the core to the shaft uh, of the brush. So we just loosen those up through these access holes. And then we're going to lift this uh, core off of the shaft. Now the one thing to point out is this is the core that comes with the retrofit kit right here. And they, they have different access points so you can tell which, which core is which, uh, but we're going to go ahead and remove this one. So now that we've got the hub removed, we're going to remove the shaft from the motor. Now you can see that there's a difference in the length of the shaft. Uh, that's so that this longer shaft can 
be supported from the new tower and the bearing. Now one thing to also point out, we removed the nut before we uh, pulled the shaft out, but that's one place that you can hit potential complications in the repair or the retrofit process. The nut can become seized on the shaft or it might have be rounded from prior servicing of the, of the brush or the motor. So you may need to cut that off or you might have to take the brush itself and lay it on the ground so that you get better leverage. So at this point we're going to remove the motor or remove this plate that holds the motor to the framework. And we're going to, this uh, base plate right here is going to get installed in its place. And then the hardware right here will go through this base plate into the motor. One thing that is really important to mention is that anti-seize needs to be applied to all of the fasteners and hardware during this retrofit process. Uh, and that, that, it's not only to make it easier to service in the future, but also to make it so that it doesn't gall up during the installation process. So now we're just going to go ahead and remove the motor from the framework. The base plate is installed at this point. So the one thing to point out with this though is as you're installing this base plate and bringing the motor into position, don't tighten it down all the way. The reason for that is we need to be able to install the shaft with the tower or the bracket and make sure that it lines up correctly before we tighten it all down. So now we're going to uh, go ahead and put the uh, bracket in place or the tower in place. And we're going to get this all tightened down and then we can install the shaft. So we've uh, gone ahead, we've got the tower in place, the support bracket in place, and we've put the shaft down through the motor. Now again, like we mentioned, we left the, the anchoring hardware the, on the base plate a little bit loose so that we could move this shaft around in order to get the bearing in position. So we'll just go ahead and slide this down. And remember to always apply anti-seize. The anti-seize was uh, applied to the shaft where it goes through the motor and it also gets applied here where the bearing sits. So again we need that a little bit of movement in there so that we can put the hardware in. One thing that comes with the bearings are these little uh, collars. And this collar has to be installed and put in right through the bearing so that the, there isn't any movement with the hard, between the hardware and the bearing. So any of the flange bearings that come with the, any of McNeil's equipment has one of these collars uh, included. So that goes down right inside here. And sometimes you need to give it a little tap. And we're going to go ahead and drop the hardware through there. Now, with the hardware through there, this is lined up correctly. At this point, we can go through and tighten all the hardware on the base plate and then also tighten the uh, nut at the bottom of the shaft to lock everything in position. Once it's locked into position, we tighten our set screws on our bearing and then we'll be ready to reinstall the hub. So the shaft is now in place, it's secured. We've tightened all the hardware down for the base plate, the tower, and the bearing. And so we're ready to put the hub back on. Now, we've installed a lock collar or locking clamp around the shaft right here. That's about a quarter of an inch above the bearing and the reason for this is to provide us a, a landing spot for the core when we place it back on the shaft. It needs to sit a little bit higher than the top of the bearing so that the bottom of the hub does not rub on the framework of the equipment. So we're going to go ahead and install that hub right now. And it can be a little bit tricky. It's, you can see through these uh, holes where the clamp is 
to be able to kind of get it down over the shaft, but it's also helpful just to use a ladder. So I'm going to do that. Then from the ladder, you can see down in there. I have a slide right over there. So now that it's sitting down in position, we can go ahead and tighten the clamps through these holes to secure the hub to the shaft. With the hub in place, we can put the foam back on. Remember that it's really important to put the foam back on in the correct order. So if in the first part of the process, you laid things out to where it's easy to remember and easy to put things back together, it should be go relatively smooth. So we'll go ahead and put the last few pieces on and then put the cap back on the top. And one more. So the last few pieces of foam is in place. Now we can put the cap back on. And remember that this is actually going to compress. So it's going to be important to kind of line it up. So we get that top bolt started. Then we can take the, the screwdriver or a piece of threaded lot, rod or a long quarter 20 bolt to put down in there to keep it lined up. So there we go. It's not lined up there. And I'll go ahead and ratchet this down. Then we can tighten the quarter inch bolts to hold it in place. Once the work is complete and the conditions deemed safe, the lockout tag out can be removed. Once the assembly is complete of the retrofit kit, it's really important to make sure to test the brush, make sure that it has smooth rotation and that everything is working correctly. Thank you for joining us at McNeil Tech, The Wash Experience.